Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial. In this one we're going to learn how to create a setup for a pickup mechanic uh, where we pick up an object from somewhere in the level and we can place it and then send an, send an event off that one. So I'll show you a quick setup for now of what we've got. I'll just click play from here and if we go up to the wall and press E on our pickup, uh, we can pick it up and go over to where we should be placing it in the level and press E and there we go, it shows up and is in the right place. And I'll just show you the kismet for this now. Um, in our level, firstly, uh, we have two different triggers. We have one trigger over here and one trigger over here. This trigger is just uh, picking our pickup up. And we've got this pickup from, if we find it in our content browser, this is just the Berserk uh, Static Mesh. But I mean, if you want to find your own, you can go to UDK Game, have Static Meshes typed in there, and also type in Pickup, and you can select any of these uh, from this list here. Uh, I've used this pickup berserk, but you're welcome to use whatever else. I've also got two more static meshes placed, uh, which are here. I've got just an exact duplicate of the one that was on the wall over here. And I've also got, if I just move this trigger out of the way, I've also got the exact same one, but with a different material applied. If I open up its properties here, and we can go to the static mesh component under rendering, uh, in the materials, I've set up my own material, which is um, just a really, really basic material setup. And I've got uh, a red constant um, plugged into the diffuse, and you can plug an opacity channel into there. And with the physics material in under material, I've got translucent, and I think you can even change that to unlit, and it'll work just as well. Um, so that that's the really basic material setup. And it works pretty well for me. Uh, I, I saw that actually in Unreal demonstrations. So if you guys get a chance to open up one of the Unreal uh, packages, I'm sure you'll find it in there. And so we've got three variations of this pickup. And basically what it does is the, these two static meshes are hidden by default. And then when we pick this one up, uh, this translucent material unhides. This is just showing the player you know, where they can actually place the pickup in the level. It's kind of indicating to them and giving them a bit of help. And so then when we come over to this trigger, uh, then we can toggle these two. Uh, this one was by the side as you saw in the level, but if I move that straight over, then it would just look like you were placing the um, pickup. So I'll just do that, give you a quick demonstration of this setup, move the trigger back into place, and then we'll play it again. So we can run up to our trigger. This is the first pickup that we've got there. You press E, and then we run over to here. This one is unhidden, and then we can press that, and then we've got uh, the trigger in place there. In our, in our Kismet window here, this is the first trigger setup. So if I just move into a bit of better screen space here for you. Basically, we've got the trigger zero used, which is this trigger here. Uh, I've not really changed any properties of there. I've changed the radius and height, but that's it. In Kismet, I've unchecked aim to interact and changed the interact distance just so it's a bit easier to pick up. And uh, apart from that, I've changed these static meshes to movers and changed the collision on them so they are blocking as well. So uh, when we click the first trigger, uh, we unhide, we hide this one, sorry, and unhide the red one. If I just bring this back into place here for you. So if I just select these in there, we've, un we've hidden this one and unhidden this one as this was set to hidden by default in its properties under display. This one's also set to hidden as startup, so that will still be hidden. And then we also turn on this, this trigger here. Uh, we can disable this trigger by just unchecking enabled. So if we ran over to this trigger first off, then we wouldn't be able to use it. It's only once we press this trigger that it is enabled to be able to toggle the next two, which are these two. And we've also got a couple of sounds playing off the Kismet event. I've got a different sound playing from this one to this one, just so you know a pickup and play sound. And I've just found these sounds uh, in the content browser. Again, I'll have just gone to UDK game, gone to sound cues, and typed in pickup and you have loads of pickup sounds to choose from there and uh, you can choose whichever one you want for this demonstration though I used the armor respawn queue 
and for the placement I used the weapon pickup 01Q. So we'll go into setting up the second key because what I want to happen is I want to pick up and place two different keys on these two pads here and then this door will open. So it kind of brings into play lots of different components rather than just a, a simple pick up and place uh, pick up. So we're going to setting that up now. So to start off you need three setting meshes in your scene of the pickup you're picking up and placing. You need one on the wall or the floor wherever you're picking it up from with a trigger surrounding it. I've changed some of the trigger properties here to, for the collision height and radius so that you can easily pick it up and I've also got two static meshes on the floor, one with the translucent material that we created before. You can add that by opening up its properties, go into the dynamic SM actor, static mesh component, rendering, and in materials you can just press the green add new item and just plug in the material there from when it's selected in your content browser. I've also got all three of these static meshes as movers and I've changed the collision to block all which is under collision, block all. For a pickup, you don't necessarily need to have collision on these, but for this demonstration, I've just added collision there. I've also changed the two pickups wherever we're placing the, the pickup. I've changed their properties under display to hidden. So these are hidden by default. If we go into our perspective viewport and press G for game, it shows them hidden when we're in game. So that, 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 that's a good setup for now. Okay, we can open up Kismet. And starting with our first trigger from, from our wall or from our floor, wherever we're picking up the object from, we can right click in Kismet and go to new event using trigger five or whatever number trigger you have, and then go to used. We can change its properties to turn off aim to interact and change the interact distance to 200. You can scale this down a bit, but for testing, I'll leave it a big number so it's easier to pick them up. Uh, I'll also add a toggle here, new action, toggle and a normal toggle and I also hold down T and left mouse click for a normal toggle here and um, sorry I've got the two toggles the wrong way around uh, I delete this first one uh, right click new action toggle and you need a toggle hidden and from the used output we'll go to toggle not hide and unhide and from the output we'll go to turn on and basically what we're going to do now is when we use this trigger we want to hide this uh, object on the wall here and we want to unhide this this translucent uh, mesh here just to indicate where to the player where they need to go and place the trigger so with these two meshes selected in the scene we'll right click on this pink target tab and choose new object bars using enter actors and we've got two there added alternatively you can just right click and add each one separately uh, but that's just an easy way to add them both together so, if we just test this out now, we'll play from here. And if we go to the wall, press E, that hides, and this mesh on the floor unhides. So that's working. Secondly, we'll go to this second trigger on the floor, where we're actually pick, placing our pickup or our key card, and click on this trigger. We'll come back into Kismet, uh, right click, New event using trigger 4 or whichever trigger number you have and go to used. We'll change the interact distance and the aim to interact again and we'll also disable this trigger by unchecking enabled. And from this toggle turn on, we'll drag the event tab down to there. And what this is saying is this trigger will be disabled until this one on the wall is picked up uh, and then we'll turn that trigger on and then allow it to use it. Otherwise, the player could just just as easily walk up to this uh, trigger here and they'd be able to open the door without having picked up the first one. So that's just a good little debugging feature uh, to make sure that players can't break your game. And for this second trigger, it's just a simple uh, toggle again by new action, toggle, toggle hidden. We'll hooked up used toggle again and these two static meshes on the floor will select and right click on the target and we'll add them there. So that setup is complete. Uh, in the previous version, I added two sounds, which I will select uh, by holding control and selecting them both. I'll copy control C and control V to paste. I'll drag these down into place. And from the first used, I go to play. And from the second used trigger, I go to play again. 
If you want to replicate these two sounds, uh, for the first sound I've got, I've got Pickups Armor Respawn Q, and for the second one, I have got the, the Weapon Pickup 01 Q. So that's just playing two different sounds so that the player knows when they're pick up, picking up and placing. The only thing left to do now is to hold Control and Alt, left mouse click, and drag a box around these, and press down C to comment, and I'll just call this Key 02. And so we'll just test this out, making sure it's all working. So we'll go to the wall, we'll look over there first, nothing, nothing is visible, we can't press E over the trigger. Uh, we'll go over to the wall, press E, and this one unhides, and we'll go to the switch, press E again, and that's in place. We'll try this second trigger, we know it already works, but we'll make sure everything's correct, and that's all looking good. The only one thing we need to change now is that we know it's working, we'll just drag this static mesh back over there so that we can um, have that in the right place. Uh, just a side note, if you're having trouble selecting these static meshes with the translucent materials, just make sure this checkbox up here, allow translucent selection, is ticked so that you can actually click it. Because if you uncheck it, uh, it'll make you click through the object and make you start selecting brushes and stuff like that. So just make sure that's ticked and then you can select these meshes. So now that we know it's working, the next thing we need to do is to count when these two triggers are in place. Because what we want to happen is, when we've picked up these two, two objects here, we want the door to open. So for this, what we'll do is we'll use a counter. So at the end of these two sequences, we'll right click, new condition, counter, and we'll go to int counter. Okay, and what this does is it's just literally what it says. It's, it's counting how many inputs and sending out an output. So for example, we'll go from the used of our second trigger there, and from the used of our second trigger here, so it looks like that. These two triggers here are going into the input, and these are the two placement triggers that we've used. And so this is gonna count for two inputs. So if we right click on the tab of A, and create a new int variable, and right click on the tab of B, and create a new int variable, we're counting for two inputs. So we'll change B to two, and so if we click on the actual ink counter, the increment amount is one, okay? So this is always gonna be counting up by one. So it'll start at zero, as A zero, and on the first input, it'll change A to one. So when this trigger is used, it'll add an input going into here, and it'll change A to one, okay? So what one is still not equal to two, so we'll wait for the second trigger to fire, and it'll add one on top of one. So it'll change A to two, so now A is two and B is two. So on this output here, A is equal to B. When two is equal to two, we'll send an output into an event saying that, yeah, we've got two counts here. So if you wanted A is less than B, so say for example on the first trigger, uh, you've got a one there in A and it'll say, is A less than B? And if one is less than two, then you know, play, play in a, a message saying, you know, you still need one pickup or something like that. But for now, to keep it basic, we'll just have A is equal to B, and we'll send it to an output. For this, for this uh, matinee sequence, I've just got a basic door set up like we did in a previous tutorial, with just a door on a movement track, opening up. So we'll just hook that on to the output of A equals B, and we'll go into play there. And hopefully now, when we pre uh, pick, pick up and place these two triggers, this door will then open. So we'll just test that out now. So that's the first key in place, and the second one, and then the door opens. So obviously you can make this a bit more complex if you want from using the previous tutorials. Maybe you can have a camera pan showing the door opening, different sounds coming off. Maybe you could have three uh, keys to put into place, a red card, a green card, and a blue card, or something like that. Just have fun with it. Uh, the last thing we'll do is just comment on this. Uh, this is our counter. And then we'll comment this saying open door. Just so if someone comes across our Kismet sequence, they know exactly what's going on. We've got key one, key two, counting for them both, and then opening a door. Uh, you can also create subsequences. 
by holding down control and alt and left mouse dragging across everything right click on one of the the nodes and we can create a new sequence and this is uh, pick up and place key and so this transforms it down into this blue box here and uh, if we double click on it our sequence is there uh, we can go back up a sequence and you can imagine if you have lots of different puzzles in your scene uh, these can start getting pretty pretty complex you know I'm just copying and pasting these but you can see you can have loads of different things going on there and if you just click in them then you can easily keep things organized so that's it for the tutorial thanks for watching